Have you ever wondered where the Amish and Mennonite people of Lancaster County came from? Obviously, they didn't just drop out of the sky. In this presentation, we will follow some of their paths from their cradle in Zurich, Switzerland, to many places around the globe, and of course, to right here in beautiful Lancaster County. Zurich, January 21st, 1525, and a little house behind the Grossminster in Zurich. A small group of earnest seekers are gathered in the house of the mother of one of them, Felix Mons. In a decision that would eventually affect hundreds of thousands of people, George Blalock asked Conrad Grable to baptize him, and Anabaptism was born. What is Anabaptism? Well, first of all, it's not anti-Baptist. Anna is a Greek prefix meaning again, like our English prefix re. Add that to baptism, and you get Anabaptism. The Anabaptists did not choose this name, and in fact, they did not really like it. But since they had chosen to be baptized as adults, rejecting their infant baptism as useless, the name Anabaptist was given them by their enemies. From that fate-filled wintry day, Anabaptism spread rapidly. Within weeks, others in neighboring areas had been baptized, especially in the village of Sullican, just a few miles south of Zurich, where the first Anabaptist congregation appeared outside of Zurich. Other Swiss cantons soon saw rebaptisms among men and women seeking to follow Christ's teachings. Evangelists from Zurich visited St. Gallen, Waldshut, Bern, and Greningen, among other towns and villages. From there, the message spread even further. George Blauart, the first to be rebaptized, returned to Austrian territories and preached in the Tyrol, sealing his testimony in a fiery blaze at the stake. Moving down the Rhine River, the cities of Strasbourg, Cologne, and areas on both sides of the Rhine felt the impact of the message. In Bavaria, Augsburg was the home of a sizable Anabaptist community until persecution forced them to other areas. Due to the incessant persecution, Anabaptists from various parts of Europe began to immigrate to Moravia. Nicholsburg in southern Moravia had a large Anabaptist community within a few years. As persecution revved up in the Tyrol, Hundreds of Tyrolean Anabaptists would eventually make the more tolerant lands of Moravia their new home. Jacob Hutter, from whom the Hutterites received their name, was one of these Tyrolean Anabaptists, and the Tyrolean Anabaptists would become the core of the Hutterite community. But refugees also poured into Moravia from the German states and from Silesia, where Anabaptist ideas had been introduced very early. Moravian lords were more tolerant than the lords in other European territories, as Moravia and Bohemia had experienced their own pre-Reformation church reforms during the previous century. The Moravian lords were generally very glad to get the industrious and honest Anabaptists to work their lands in exchange for rents and taxes. The Moravian Anabaptist communities were constantly sending missionaries back into the areas where the immigrants had originated from. The Hutterites were the most persistent of the Anabaptists in sending out these evangelists, sending them out every spring and fall. Within 75 years after the initial baptisms, the Hutterites may have numbered around 50,000 people living in scores of Bruderholz, or communities, scattered mostly in southern Moravia. After the Thirty Years' War shook Europe in the early 1600s, Moravia ended up being ruled by strong Catholic leaders who forced the Moravian lords to expel all Anabaptists. The communities were abandoned and the members scattered with a small group moving eastward into Transylvania, now a part of modern Romania. While there, a band of exiled Corinthians, part of South Austria, met up with a straggling little group of Hutterites, and excited to find what they saw as true Christianity, the exiles joined the Hutterites. Not long after, the whole group moved on east to the Ukraine. Anabaptism activity began in the Low Countries a few years after the Zurich baptisms. Although the movement reached it later, these Dutch Anabaptists would eventually become more numerous than their Swiss counterparts. Menno Simons, a Catholic priest turned Anabaptist, was a well-known and respected leader in the Low Countries and North German states. It was from Menno that the Mennonites received their name in later years, although again, not by their own choice. Leonard Bowens was another very active Dutch Anabaptist evangelist. His meticulous records, still extant today, reveal that he baptized over 10,000 people during a 30-year period. Dutch Anabaptist evangelists were so successful that in later years, Holland became almost 10% Mennonite. Fierce persecution also drove many of the Dutch Anabaptists from their homeland. Moving east, a large group settled near Danzig, Prussia, now Poland. Later, when Catherine the Great offered free land and military exemption in the Ukraine, 
A group of Mennonites left Prussia and settled in the plains along the Dnieper River. There they grew quite numerous and were very instrumental in turning the grassy steppes into the breadbasket of Europe. However, when the Russian government threatened to take away their military exemption in the mid-1800s, hundreds of these Mennonites and Hutterites, who had settled in nearby areas, emigrated to the United States and Canada. The Hutterites now number over 40,000 people in almost 500 colonies. The so-called Russian Mennonites later experienced problems with Canadian authorities over schooling issues, and in response, a large group of them emigrated to Mexico, and from there to Belize, Paraguay, Bolivia, and other Latin American countries, where tens of thousands of them still live in colonies. Back to the Swiss Anabaptists, sometimes called Swiss Brethren. Although persecution came and went, the Swiss were able to survive in rural areas of the Swiss cantons where the local authorities and populace were not inclined to drive them away, and in fact, some even aided them when the Telfer Jaeger, Anabaptist hunters, came looking for a catch. Some of the Swiss brethren moved down the Rhine, either by choice or by forced exile, to the Alsace and Palatinate, where more tolerant local lords were looking for hard workers to revive their lands depopulated by wars. In the 1690s, a schism occurred in the Swiss brethren over practical issues, and one side of the schism eventually became known as the Amish, after Jacob Amon, a prominent minister. William Penn, having inherited a huge chunk of American land from the king, invited the Anabaptists to settle on his lands where they were to be granted freedom of religion. Wary of persecution, many Mennonites and Amish took William up on his offer and began to settle in Pennsylvania, beginning the first Mennonite settlement in Lancaster County in 1712. The first Amish followed soon after, with most of the Amish initially settling further north in what is now Berks County. In the 1700s, an estimated 300 Amish and 3,000 Mennonites came to America. In the 1800s, the Amish flow increased to about 3,000, while the Mennonite numbers shrank to hundreds of immigrants. With the passing of the years, both Amish and Mennonites have moved west. The Amish population is now estimated to have passed the quarter million mark and doubling approximately every 20 years. Amish communities are now scattered in 30 states in Ontario, from Maine to Montana and as far south as Texas. Mennonites have spread even further and are found in virtually every state of the Union. With mission outreaches, many countries, Latin America, Africa, and Asia, not traditionally associated with Anabaptism, now have their own Anabaptists. What a story. From a house in Zurich, Switzerland, the Anabaptist people have become scattered over many continents. The movement is now almost five centuries old and still growing in numbers. Only God knows where it will end.